Hi guys! How are you doing today? I hope you're doing fine. Uh, thank you for joining me for episode 21 of my Inspirations podcast. So, Inspirations is a podcast about knitting and yarn dyeing, hosting by me. Um, I'm Christelle and I'm a knitter. Um, I live in France and uh, I'm an indie yarn dyer. So thank you very much if you're new to the podcast and uh, I hope you like it. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again today. You can find me on the internet uh, on my website. That's www.tricostitch.com. Uh, there is an English version of the website. Um, the best way to keep in touch is to subscribe to the newsletter. So you have all the useful links are in the show notes. You just have to click on plus uh, just below the screen. Um, <clears throat> also, I'm very active on Instagram, but unfortunately, due to the algorithm, you are not assured to see my publications unless you activate the notifications, which can be quite uh, tiresome sometimes. So, uh, yeah, the best way to keep in touch and make sure you're not missing anything is to subscribe to the newsletter. Um, also, if you wish to contact me for anything. The best way is to reply to my newsletter that goes directly into my uh, mailbox. Uh, you can also, if it is regard, if you have some questions or you request a custom order, the best way is to reach me directly on my in my Etsy shop. And you can also, uh, you know, chat on Instagram, but uh, do not ask me anything on Instagram because I have no way to keep track of messages there. And sometimes it can get very crowded and uh, I can just forget uh, about messages on Instagram. So that's really not the best way to get in touch. If you are, if, if it's a, a question, if it's just to say hi, it's okay. But if you have a question or, or you need something, Instagram is really not the way to, to ask anything. And uh, last thing I wanted to tell you is to thank you very much for using the Tricot Stitch hashtag. Uh, I'm browsing it every day and I'm really so happy to see what you're doing with your Tricot Stitch yarn or Tricot Stitch pattern. Thank you so much. Um, also, there is an ongoing cal uh, in my Raveri group and on Instagram. It's a monthly permanent cal actually. So you can join, you can jump in. Um, all you have to do is post a picture of your Tricot Stitch uh, project either using tricot stitch yarn or a tricot stitch pattern or both if you want a double entry and you can play on Ravelry there is a, a dedicated link in the Ravelry group uh, and you can also play on Instagram with the hashtag uh, tricot stitch fo fanfare no 2020 and I'm always confusing I'm always mixing fanfare and parade so you might have heard me talk about FO Parade is because I hesitated a lot about <laughs> what to name this uh, permanent car in my group. Uh, was it fanfare? Was it parade? I wasn't sure, but I'm still not sure. I think I opted for fanfare, fanfare but uh, yeah, maybe I'm still not sure. <laughs> so it's parade slash fanfare, it's the same thing. Um, right. <laughs> so I have lovely things to share with you today, but first of all, I wanted to thank you so much because uh, the last two shop updates have been a blast. I mean, huge success. Everything sold out. Oh, I'd say 90% of the uh, of uh, of the shop sold out in minutes, and that's very cool. But that's very cool for me, <laughs> for you a bit less. So I just wanted to tell you that uh, if you are watching this uh, with a bit of delay because the podcast usually goes on goes live on at 5 p.m. French time on Mondays and the shop is updated a bit before that. So if you're watching this later and there is nothing left in the shop, don't worry. Uh, I'm uh, I'm doing shop updates every week. It's not always the same thing uh, that I put in the shop but uh, I'm always happy to uh, dye something for you. And regarding uh, the huge success of all the Imabo series that I put in the shop last week, 
so Imabel is this English illustrator, very talented English illustrator that has a complete series of goodies and, uh, and bags and uh, tin boxes and uh, lovely things uh, for knitters. So everything went. <laughs> flew through the door really um, but there will be a restock on Imabo on uh, Monday the uh, November the 30th so one week from now and um, what I've just shown you is her sheep in sweaters series and she has another series for knitters and it's called woolly puffins <laughs> and it's as cute as it sounds so <clears throat> Willy Puffins will be in the shop as well next week because you showed me like Emma Ball is something you really love so there will be more. Uh, all the things Emma Ball that were in the shop last week will be also back in stock and available in the Sheep in Sweaters series and in the Willy Puffins series. Uh, actually, there is a bit more more things in the Woolly Puffins series than in the Shipping Sweaters. So you'll see that uh, I think there are permanent planners, uh, Woolly Puffins permanent planners. Uh, there is a mug <laughs> with the uh, coordinated uh, tea tidy, tea bag tidy, I think. Um, it's really really cute and I'm so happy that you like it because I'm so enjoying it uh, I actually I keep one of each for myself obviously <laughs> that's my privilege as a shop owner and I so love that series I so love it so one word about that because one uh, consequence of having uh, you know little things in the shop Emma Bowl, but also the gnomes no here gnomes kids uh, no my friend is here <laughs> sorry so the consequence of having little sm small items in the shop like this is that uh, the volume of orders grew like by half no twice by 100 percent well it's the double in volumes of orders and um, well it's more time to prepare orders obviously but the one thing I wanted to tell you is that if you are placing multiple orders because you want you want to avoid being cut jacked uh, please make sure to make a note to let me know you want me to combine your orders because I mean when I have only like 20 orders to deal with at the same time I can easily spot if there are one person uh, ordering multiple times but uh, for example this week I've w it was very complicated to regroup orders if you didn't say anything and some orders that were meant to be grouped without any mention went were sent uh, separately so uh, if you wish to combine order please uh, let me know send me a message on Etsy and put a comment in the uh, message to vendor section of your order. Uh, you can put a message actually when you check out. There is a little space when you, where you can uh, uh, type a message for me. So just let me know and I will be happy to, happy to combine shipping, especially for the international because it can really go through the roof <laughs> if you add uh, separate orders uh, you pay the full full fare each time it can really uh, go up very quickly so uh, I was so busy with all your uh, order this week so it was great I was so happy uh, I had not so much time to knit as well but I want to show you my slip saraganza because I think uh, I need to show it and show you that I'm making progress um, so I've decided, I don't know why really, because I so want to be done with it, but my mother always told me that I would never go the easy way. It's the thing with me. When I'm faced with a choice, easy or complicated, usually I go with complicated. Don't ask me why. Okay, so I decided to go with a good big border. And, uh, 
I started, I'm almost finished actually with the fourth stripe, so two to go. So here is my border so far. And you can see that for the third stripe, I used uh, my darker things colorway um, held together with the mohair and silk. And for the, I still have this uh, stripe and this stripe, but I won't be doing that again. I will, I want to have the um, pure darker things color at the end, just as a reminder of uh, darker things on other parts of the shawl. And throughout the shawl, I will have used the Moran silk in three places. So for clue, bonus, for the bonus clue, I used it paired with Gloria, the gorgeous pink. Then with the green here in the diamonds section, here and here. And in the end with, uh, well, the stripes I've just, I've just shown you. I so want to be done with it. I so want to be done with it. I want to be done with it, but I don't want to, you know, take the easy route again. <laughs> I want to, I want the large border because I don't want to have too many leftovers as well. So I, I'm going to try very hard to have it done by the end of the month. Because, you know, there are some very strong Halloween vibes in there. And I mean, it's Christmas now. So this has lasted long enough. I'm just, I, yeah, I really want to be done with it. Because, you know, there are a lot of Christmassy things I want to knit on and I'm not allowing myself because I want to be done with it. And it's not going fast enough because I don't have any <laughs> enough time. Anyway, <laughs> that was my, my rant. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah. So, I don't know if, you, if you've seen, but um, I've put some pre-orders in the shop for the for the gnomes so last week uh, the pre-orders for the um, adventure gnome mystery car like sold out in minutes as well <laughs> so thank you what I did is that I put pre-orders 10 pre-orders for 10 more kits for the uh, mystery car in the shop those have started to go because I put them in the shop last week. And I put also some more pre-orders for the uh, Never Not Gnoming pattern for this little guy here. Oh, no, la. No, no, la. Okay. Uh, no, you didn't see him. Okay. La. Um, in that colorway, Gnome des Jardins. That's uh, green and uh, orange, bright orange. So the pre-orders were again uh, sold out very quickly. So I added more and I'm almost done dyeing this little guy. I still have uh, some kits to dye, but uh, that one is almost done. Um, so that was for the gnomes, but I want to show you while I'm at the gnomes. Uh, I offered some, uh, you know, little stitch markers coordinated with the gnomes kit and I want to tell you that some are back in stock so I hope my camera is going to focus but yes, I think she's going to focus okay, so this one is new, it's an acorn I, if you remember I had double acorns on uh, on a twig and this are this is the um, pinecone pinecone is back in stock and the little acorn, lonely acorn, <laughs> is going to go in the shop. So <clears throat> those are not to be bought separately because there is no shipping fee associated with that. You can put it in your cart at no uh, additional shipping fee, but it, it is to be bought only with the gnomes kit. Um, I had it's written down in the product description but I had some persons buying that alone, but uh, I had to cancel the order because I am not uh, sending that uh, on its own at no cost, of course. So it's just to, you know, to combine with your uh, gnome kit. And I have two other little stitch marker sets I want to show you that are in the shop. 
new ones. The first one is three little cats. Lovely little cat. Sorry. Okay. So the inspiration for the design is clearly Japanese, I think. It's beautiful. I hope I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and then I have those very, very cute little foxies. They are so cute. So you have four little foxies. And uh, I've not shown you for the, um, the little cats, but I've introduced in the shop those new hooks so it's you can you know lock them and put in the needle put it on the needle it's removable oh, i was searching for the right word okay so both are both sets are in the shop um so yeah i, I told you i was a bit you know I, i'm still enjoying knitting on my slip seraganza but given it was I, I made the choice to anchor it in a uh, specific um, background halloween a bit halloween background i really want to be done with it because now it's time for christmas and i'm sorry about what that but i'm going to uh, force the autofocus on, on my face because i'm seeing i'm blurred a bit again so sorry about that so you will see my palm, I think, across the podcast. Uh, I don't know why my camera is doing that. Usually it stops focusing on my face, uh, face and starts focusing on the background. Uh, it's because of the mode I'm using, I think. It's the mode that enables it to uh, do the autofocus very quickly on anything I'm putting close to the camera. But I don't know why. Uh, and it's not locked on my face. So I might, uh, I will, I think, do some more um, tests and see if I'm uh, on a mode locked on my face. I still can show you things very easily uh, front of the camera because let's be honest, it's not been so easy to show you things in front of the camera. It's supposed to work really differently and to adjust and to focus very quickly. So it's not the case. So maybe if I don't have any benefits <laughs> of, with this mode, I'm going to switch modes. I need to do a bit of testing. But yeah, it's Christmas now, okay? It's, uh, all I want to need is Christmas C these days. And so what I, all I want to propose you is Christmas C these days as well. So I have some new socks uh, kits in the shop. I want to show you, but first I want to show you for which pattern. And I'm going to share with you a bit of my background. <laughs> I don't have a real fireplace at my uh, in my little house. That's my dream one day to have a fireplace, but uh, it's not the case yet. One day. In the meantime, I have this one. And the pattern I want to offer you kits for is this one. It's called Noël d'Antan, which could be translated to Vintage Christmas. Uh, it's from a Canadian um, designer called Elise Damour Designs yeah. on our website. And I think for me, this is the quintessence of Christmas. I mean, it cannot get more Christmassy than that. So <clears throat> because Heli's, uh, well, that pattern is already, uh, is already a year old, but it was published as part of a kit and was exclusive to the kit for several months. That's why I'm, um, offering you kits right now for, for this and uh, it's in English as well because she's Canadian and I think she uh, directly um, wrote the pattern in both languages so I have something the first kits are very Christmassy oh and one word about the bases because this is this those are the first kits I'm offering for this pattern so you can see you have a main color that's called shortbread 
and you see it on tweet fingering and here on BFL fingering, BFL superwash. And the minis are in my extra fine merino, uh, extra fine fingering base, and it's Mombo Sapin and Santa. So those are very close to the original pattern uh, choice of colors because I mean I want I wanted it to be really Christmassy as well, and uh, the idea be behind the the choice of the two bases is I wanted to offer you something with you know a woolly feeling for the BFL a yarn with a bit of teeth still very 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 soft but with a real woolly feeling because my uh, extra fine um, my uh, yeah extra fine fingering is super soft and buttery soft actually uh, but for those kits i wanted something with a more woolly feeling something more close to the feel of of wool that's why i chose bfl and uh, for the other base, it's really soft, but I wanted something that looks a bit rustic. So it looks rustic, but it's not. It's very, very soft. And it has those little Donegal nubs all over and I think it's going to be gorgeous. So that was the idea uh, behind the choice for the bases because I wanted to, you know, propose something that would uh, make come to your mind uh, pictures of coziness, Hugo sitting in front of a fire with a hot uh, cocoa in hand and uh, on the countryside and with family and really something super uh, warm and cozy with warm feelings and uh, yeah, so that why, that's why I chose those bases and I ordered in the BFL ex, uh, especially for those kits. So that's the first. Oh yeah, and one last word about the bases. You can see that uh, the tweet fingering is a bit more gray than the uh, BFL. That's because the differences in colors of the uh, undyed bases is uh, real. Here you have something that is more on the gray side and here you have something that is very creamy, very creamy, almost pale yellow for the BFL. So the first kits. Oh yeah, I forgot the best part. <laughs> the names, because I'm a huge fan of American, uh, North American um, Christmas songs. I know them by heart. So. Uh, I decided to uh, choose uh, lyrics from my favorite uh, Christmas songs to name the kids. So I'm not going to sing, although in the French version I finally sung. But this one is Santa Claus is coming to town. Okay. Yeah, aptly named. Okay, the next kit. So that was very close to the uh, inspiration to the original kit. But then I went sideways <laughs> and I wanted to offer you something a bit different. So that's the second colors I'm offering you. Again, still on the same basis, tweed fingering and BFL fingering. Okay, both are super wash. And the minis all are in uh, the same um, extra fin fingering base. So the colorways this time is that beautiful burgundy uh, that I've shown you before. It's Chinon, paired with shortbread and um, ivy confetti. And I wanted something a bit different, still something very rich and saturated uh, because it conveys to me a, a very Christmassy feeling and paired with light colors for the color work. So this one, and I might sing, <laughs> I don't know, uh, chestnut roasting on an open fire. Okay, so I, I think that I might cast on with that one. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning, I was intent on using uh, the tweed kit, but I had a very hard time choosing and then the woolly feeling on the BFL of the BFL got me. So I think I will cast on with that kit. 
once I'm done with the slip extravaganza. <laughs> I really need to be done with it. Okay, the last kit. It's on BFL only because I was out of tweed, but fear not, I should receive some more today or tomorrow, very soon. So if you want the next one on tweed as well, just let me know. So again, that one is not your regular Christmas <laughs> colors, but uh, still, I think it's quite festive. And I can totally see the little uh, color work in those two colors. And also I had a very good friend of mine who told me that the only thing that she loves more than a blue, a deep, gorgeous deep blue is a gorgeous deep burgundy. So this is for you, my friend. <laughs> you triggered this, okay? Okay, and that one is named also, the colorways are Obscuro, Nutmeg and Chinon, and the name is All of a Blue Christmas Without You. I told you I might think. Sing. <laughs> I cannot help myself. <laughs> okay, so those are the kits for the uh, Noël d'Antan pattern, so vintage Christmas pattern. Uh, the pattern is sold separately on Ravelry. And I think that's it. And I might put in now that the... Sorry about that. That the shipping fees have been lowered. So it's 9.90 euros. 9.90 euro uh, for Europe. And it's 19 euro 90 for the rest of the world with increments of one euro when you add a new product to your cart. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I'll continue with the yarn that's going to be in the shop on Monday, knowing that I didn't dye a lot this week. I dyed the kits for the, um, the socks and I dyed a bit more and um, and basically that's it because I've been really busy preparing orders and dyeing the kits for the gnomes, the pre-orders for the gnomes. So, this week I have Chinon on mohair and silk. So that's this very beautiful and deep burgundy on mohair and silk. I was dying to try. <laughs> and so I tried. And it's beautiful. Then I have an exhaustion colorway. You might remember I went uh, quite in, uh, det in details about what is an exhaustion colorway. I still need to put some information, basics information on my website, on my uh, dyeing process, my bases. It's ongoing, my bases and my colors. It's ongoing. I have hopes that it's going to be done by the end of the year, I hope, and start 2021 with a brand new uh, updated website. So this is an exhaustion colorway to which I added a bit of purple because a bit of lilac actually because yeah I think four was too much for the dye bath and some were really uh, speckled but one was left with almost nothing so I had to you know intervene. <laughs> so this is a lovely colorway, lovely lilac with shades of pale grey greenish gray really it's difficult to uh, name that color it's it's beautiful I have a difficulty in finding the right name for this color but it's definitely lovely and uh, the name of the color is fearless dawn and then I have a new colorway that I really love and when I finished dyeing it, I was not sure about it. It's this. I called it Aurithia Blue. Aurithia Blue. And it's a gorgeous mix of different shades of blue with a bit of purple and some speckles, random speckles. And I don't know why, but well, I know why. It's because I dyed it and it was almost dark and I didn't see it in broad daylight for a few days. Um, 
it, it's only when I saw it in broad daylight and all skinned up that I really was wow I love it because I wasn't sure I even didn't write the recipe down actually at the beginning I was thinking I would not repeat it uh, but seeing it right now in broad daylight daylight I think it's gorgeous so this is on MCN Marino's uh, cashmere and nylon and you have three skins of the same colorway, a bit more intense because it's a single ply by a base. So that's my uh, extra fine single. And it's the same colorway. Ori Tia Blue. And I wanted to name it that way because it immediately made me think about that comic character. Uh, created by the daughter of Hippolyta in uh, Lovecraft Country. And if you don't know Lovecraft Country, it's the new, it's um, quite new. I think it uh, yeah, it's a it's a series on. Um, I don't remember the channel. Um, I don't remember. Well, it's an American uh, TV show. Lovecraft Country and it's absolutely fantastic. We've watched it with my husband and we loved it completely and the characters are great, gorgeous and uh, I love the little girl, well little, she's not little, she's a, a teenage girl but she has this wonderful uh, you know imagination and she she wrote a complete uh, comic book with a, uh, a female Afro-American uh, uh, heroine uh, named Oritia Blue. And this is, I, the color made, made me think about that immediately. So that's why it's called like this. And if you don't know the show, uh, you should definitely uh, try it. It's great. Okay, um, so I have a new pattern. <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> so this is uh, my new pattern. So it's for a pair of socks and it's called the uh, cozy socks, very simply. <laughs> you know by now, uh, if you've watched me for a while that I love everything cozy so I wanted to um, design a, a, a sock pattern that would convey uh, the idea of coziness uh, right up to your feet actually so it's cozy because it will adjust to your uh, to your to your foot very easily thanks to the uh, two by two ribbing that's happening almost on the entire uh, sock. Um, included on the heel, if you can see, it's a classic uh, reinforced flap heel, but it follows along uh, the two by two ribbing instead of uh, you know going the usual uh, slip one knit one. Um, what else? I used a little metallic thread held together with the yarn uh, for the cuff and the toe. You can totally use the metallic thread for the heel flap as well. I didn't do it uh, for the sample, but you could definitely do it on your on your end. Um, it's available in three sizes, so. The size is uh, corresponds to the um, foot circumference, not the shoe size. The shoe size is really up to you. You just need to knit. Uh, well, for a size nine, I I, I knitted eight repeats of the uh, lace pattern. Uh, but if you want to make it shorter or uh, longer, you just have to uh, um, adjust the number of repeats. And um, what else did I want to tell you? Yes, the yarn. I'm actually, I'm, um, it's, this is a collaboration with a friend of mine who owns a uh, brick and mortar shop in Orsay. That's near Paris. 
It's a local yarn store near Paris. And I used some uh, of, your, of her yarn for this uh, pattern. So this is Crème Que Lazy Lion in the semi-solid uh, range of colors. And I paired it for the cuff and the toe with a Crème Que Stellaris thread in a coordinated color. So this will initially go out as a uh, exclusive pattern uh, to, uh, well, not sorry, it's going to be exclusive to a sock box that's going to be, that has just been released actually yesterday because I'm talking to you today, it's Friday, November the 20th, but the um, podcast will be live on Monday the 23rd. And the pattern goes uh, live on the uh, Ravelry on uh, the 22nd but it will be exclusive to the box for the first few um for the first few days i need to double check the length of the exclusivity period but it won't be long so it should be available for you uh, to buy individually very soon i will tell you when and i wanted to show you the lace pattern a bit from a bit up close so this is a very lovely and easy to knit uh, lace pattern. Lace and you have some stitches that are knit through the back loop, knitted through the back loop here. So uh, it's a combination of lace and twisted stitches. And it's pretty uh, quick to knit one repeat. And so it kind of has, it it has kind of an, you know, stripey effect. It speeds up the knitting, really. <laughs> and then um, the ribbing really is all around the center panel. The cuff stops here. The ribbing stops here for the center panel. And it starts again. The ribbing starts again for the toe. And so the, the ribbing to me was like, the inspiration behind this design also is that the ribbing acted like a, a plaid, you know, like a big comfy plaid you put on yourself to be cozy and warm and, and, and feel good. And what shows is just this little tiny bit of lace, but all the rest is comfy and cozy. That's why the cozy socks. <laughs> so, uh, the pattern has been tested in French. Uh, it has not been tested in English yet. So what I wanted to offer you is if you wish to uh, knit the pattern, uh, I will, I think, need two knitters per size. Uh, I will gift you the pattern, uh, even if it's not available yet, but I will gift you the pattern uh, as soon as it's out, uh, if you wish to test it and uh, give me uh, your uh, modification and language corrections, for example, on the pattern. I'm sorry, I'm, again, I'm blurred. That's really annoying. Very annoying. Okay. <laughs> I have this kind of hate-love feeling towards my camera. <laughs> so, yes. I will put that in the newsletter. So if you wish to test the pattern in English, it will be out uh, in English on the 22nd, uh, but it would it will not have been tested in English. So if you wish to test it, uh, just uh, reply to the newsletter and I will gladly gift you the pattern in exchange for you testing it and letting me know if you spot any uh, any problems. Mainly in the translation because as I said, it was tested in French. Okay, thank you so much. Um, oh yeah, and I forgot, uh, I think I put some pictures here of the of the pattern for, with the beautiful pictures uh, I shot with my daughters. The, um, it was very funny because, uh, you know, to shoot the pictures, it was in my living room. <laughs> uh, my daughter was modeling. And my, my, my two boys were completely indifferent. <laughs> they didn't care whatsoever. But my baby, Amelia, my little girl, she's two and a half now. Uh, she really wanted to take part. And I think I'm blurred again. Arrgh! 
Okay, she really wanted to take part in the uh, in the uh, in the process. So she was climbing all over me all the while I was, you know, uh, bending down and on my knees uh, to get a good angle. And uh, and afterwards, she really wanted to be included in the in the um, in the photo shoot. So we took some pictures of her as well. So that's why you have her tiny toes <laughs> with a book here. And it was actually we we had a lot of fun uh, with that uh, that photo shoot. And you might have seen the beautiful books uh, my daughters are reading or watching, looking at. <laughs> Of the little one. Um, this is the book. If you were wondering, it's Secrets of a Devon Wood, my nature journal by Joe Brown. And it's a gorgeous little book. Uh, <clears throat> Joe Brown is an illustrator and she uh, spent a lot of time, obviously, in the woods <laughs> near her home and she documented and uh, and um, drew and painted <coughs> her finds and it's absolutely gorgeous so the pictures are lovely there are gross things as well sometimes like this so gross there <laughs> look um, but it's definitely a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And there is a definite gnomish, gnomish, gnomish vibe to it. I mean, you could, she could have easily uh, drawn a, a, a gnome uh, next to uh, any of those. <laughs> I can totally see a gnome sitting just below uh, the very dangerous yeah, mushroom we've just seen here. You can totally see one here now. I mean, I think it's hiding behind this mushroom. Um, okay. Well, I think that's it for today. Did I cover everything? I think I did cover everything. <laughs> so again, I'm blurred. Okay, I think I will just let it go and try to do some testing and uh, I'm sorry about this I should have written something on my poll <laughs> autofocus in progress or something like that I think I will switch it to the face lock mode because it's really annoying okay so thank you so much for <laughs> bearing with me until the end I hope you like the podca podcast nonetheless and um, well I'll see you next week okay thank you so much Bye-bye.